Welcome to our webinar, Empowering Library Leaders in Diversity Worldwide, the Asia and Oceania Experience, presented by IFLA's Management of Library Association section, MLAS, in collaboration with the new professional special interest group, NPSIG. We are proud to present the event, and this is the sixth event, and last event of our joint webinar series to empower new library leaders worldwide and foster diversity within the profession. My name is Loida Garcia Pivo, and I am the coordinator of this series as the information coordinator of the management of library associations. Okay. Today, I will moderate the first part of this webinar. It is 3 a.m. in New York. And Magdalena Gomolka, the convener of our partner, IFLA New Professionals, whom is based in Poland, will moderate the rest of our webinar. And she is wonderful. Over the course of six webinars, library associations from countries in each IFLA regional division presented opportunities they provide for new and senior librarians, including leadership opportunities they provide for new and senior librarians, including leadership opportunities and how these libraries associations are fostering diversity within the library profession and leadership. The webinar format includes interactive opportunities to engage attendees in conversations about those topics that will elicit best practices and recommendations and the needs of new and senior professionals. The insights gained uh, from these webinars will then inform and enrich the MLIS open session at the World Library and Information Congress in Dublin on July 27 at 8.30 a.m. And we are going to have our session, Empowering Library Leaders and Diversity Worldwide, then. This will focus on the same theme, and I will moderate that session. The webinar series is connected to the IFLA Strategy 3, Connect and Empower the Field, specifically 3.2, Support Virtual Networking and Connections. We will develop a spirit of continuous collaboration in the library field through virtual networking tools that enable every librarian to be involved and engage in the global conversation. 3.3, empower the field at the national and regional levels. We will enhance the capacity of the library field to deliver actions tailored to regional and national characteristics in requirements by strengthening library association, institutions, and networks at all levels. We are pleased to feature library associations and librarians from all regions of the world in this webinar series. Our agenda today, and this is information for our event in Dublin. Our agenda today includes library associations sharing their resources about leadership and diversity, interactive conversations. Attendees, please join an interactive meeting room. And then we return to the main webinar room to hear from seasoned and veteran librarians new to leadership. They will share information about their experiences and path to leadership. I would like to thank the Asia Please mute your, your computers. I would like to thank the chair of the Asia and Oceania Regional Division, Winston Roberts. Thanks to many members of these divisions. Thank you, Liu Ying Ching and uh, Shoti Masakinan, members of our section MLAS supporting this effort. This webinar is the result of many hours of coordination and big dedication of time and energy of many people across Asia and Oceania. They're working together to make this happen. Thank you so much. 
It is proof that working together, we can do big things. Heartfelt thanks to the leadership of IFLA New Professional Special Interest Group and their convener, Magdalena Gomulka, for supporting the webinar technical aspects and many logistics. Your collaboration is valued. Before we continue, please turn off your microphone and camera during presentations and know that this meeting is being recorded. Now, I would like to ask Magdalena Gomulka, convener of IFA New Professionals, to join us for a special section. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Loida, for this uh, great introduction. Uh, as you know, uh, this webinar is uh, dedicated for, to librarians from Asia and Oceania. And uh, we would like to find out more exactly from which countries are you from. So now I would like to invite you to uh, use a Mentimeter website and you can put your uh, your uh, country ver. So now I will share my screen and you will see. Sorry. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Oh. Okay, a small problem, just a, a few seconds for that. That might uh, working. Uh, just a few moments. Uh, that's, that's really great because so, uh, there are so many people uh, uh, come here, join us, uh, and so we are so happy about that. And just, oh, that it works just a little. Okay, so I think that we need to uh, give our Mentimeter a few seconds to to work, but please uh, use a chat box and uh, write uh, write your your country exactly to which you are, and maybe that's all. Yeah, and Mentimeter said says that it needs a break so sorry sorry for that but we can use a chat and please uh, write uh, in the chat uh, which countries are with us uh, today it will be great to know uh, who are with us so i see that uh, uh, that there is new zealand usa and puerto rico Marcelia. It's great. Oh, yeah, that's great. Please remember uh, to uh, to mute your microphone because we use a Zoom meeting option today. And and oh, thank you, thank you. That will be great. That uh, okay. So um, returning to our uh, to our question about countries, which have also Marsilia, Thailand. Uh, Philippines, Thailand, that's great, Hong Kong and Philippines, that's uh, that's really great, welcome, oh, uh, Croatia, Marsilia, United Arab Emirates, Australia, Thailand, Philippines, Bangladesh, oh, that's great, so many countries are with our Zimbabwe, that's great, Thailand, Thailand, Marsilia, Marsilia, Okay. Oh, I see that. Uh, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you very much for that. You you were able to join us today. I would on. I would like only to mention that during this webinar we use a we use a worldly uh, application, and uh, you can also uh, turn on your uh, computer. So I'm. I'll give microphone to Loina back. Thank you. You are unmute, Loida, you are unmute. I'm muted. Thank you so much, Magdalena. Now I would like to introduce our speakers. 
and thank you so much to all of them. They're coming from all across Asia and Oceania. Dr. Rashida Bohazan, President of the Variance Association of Malaysia, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Women, Childhood and Community Wellbeing Development, Sarawak in Malaysia. Raymond Wong Paul Kion, Director of Macau Library and Information Management Association with Anna O, PhD candidate. Professor Mohan Kerde, President of India Library Association. Kim Taunga, President elect Lianza, President elect of the New Zealand Library Association, Inc., Head of Community Delivery, Tai Tonga South, Auckland, New Zealand. Lauren Pai, Secretary of Fiji Library Association, Coordinator of Library Information Services at the University of the South Pacific. Dr. Dilara Begun, Bangladesh Library Association, Associate Professor and Chairperson and Librarian at East West University. Kathy Walberton, CEO ELIA, Australian Library and Information Association. And Brian Boy C. Cortez, President of the Association of Library, Special Libraries of the Philippines. Thank you so much to each one of you. We were going to start with Dr. Bar Hassan today. And then we're going to continue with Raymond Kwon and Anna Au. Then we have Professor Mohan Kerde, Kim Taunga, Lauren Pai, Dilara Begun, Kathy Warburton, and Brian Boy. He's going to close our webinar. Thank you so much, each one of you. And now I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, Rashida Bokhassan. Welcome. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Lloyd, for that gracious um, um, introduction. And you look good at three o'clock in the morning over in the States. Selamat petang and uh, um, hello, everyone. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the organizer for inviting me to do a presentation on our experience on empowering um, library leaders. And this is um, the Malaysian experience. Allow me to share my screen. Uh, for the moment, let me find it. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Um, yes. Can you see? Yes. yes. Everything is fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. Now, um, this is my proposition over here. Um, I am here because, um, due to a lot of things, um, I was the CEO, and I've just uh, sort of uh, the immediate past president, Loida, uh, of the Libra uh, Librarians Association of Malaysia. We just had a general election, and um, then my, my term ended in uh, June, uh, and then I, we have now a new president. So with all the things that I am blessed with, uh, my connection and, and my work uh, with um, the library. Our proposition here uh, for our association is that um, our association is to provide pragmatic support for all the Malaysian librarians and any other related prof professionals in, the, in information studies or in the knowledge institutions. And we are also encouraging our librarians to be advocates for better communities towards achieving our SDG 2030. And these are through our association's continuous professional development programs. And we are also strengthening and aligning ourselves uh, for strategic promotion and marketing uh, for, our, for the association for, and for our members. And also, we would like to believe ourselves as um, the G force to accelerate international connectivity and contribute as an international partner and player and to strategize ourselves for international recognition in this field. And finally, uh, PPM is an institution for continuous learning uh, in research and also as a publisher for the field of management, library and information studies, especially for Malaysia. And that's how we would like to contribute globally as well. Now with the new, um, uh, with the new term and with the new uh, community, uh, committee members, this is our proposal for a working structure. And our strategy, we have various strategies uh, in looking into our 
um, business units. We have several business units in the association looking into leadership, especially on leadership and professional development. You can see that we put leadership and professional development top on the list over there. We have to have um, our public relations and social community engagement. We have to have our research and development, of course, membership development. We have now more than 2,000 plus members. And these members are not only those who are working in the library, but also associated uh, uh, organizations. And we have definitely, we need to have a very strong IT um, team, especially um, now where everything that we have, uh, we do is um, beyond geographical borders. And definitely we have to have our regional international relationships. So I can, can see over here, these are our business units at the moment. And for library development, we have uh, various groups of um, different types of libraries uh, in the uh, association. And these are the groups that we have for looking into the development of these libraries and the manpower part of it, and as well in terms of advisory. For your information in, uh, in these libraries, we have representatives of the association in this library board, especially at the state library level. And uh, for geographical inclusivity, we also have our regional members. Uh, we have our south branch, our north branch and east, and also in the geographical region of Sarawak and Sabah. If you are familiar with Malaysian geography, Sarawak and Sabah are on the island of Borneo, and we are separated from the peninsula Malaysia by the South China Sea. Now, uh, when you look into leadership, that's the title of our presentation over here. Uh, if Kim earlier was saying that she has um, not so much words uh, in, in her uh, presentation, my presentation has a lot of words. Um, we really stress a lot on capacity building. We stress a lot on this continuous professional development. Of course, the, the manpower or uh, the human resource that goes into the libraries are mostly and in the requirement of the service, especially in the public service. The requirement is they have to have um, a, at least a bachelor's degree in information studies or library science or information management. But towards when they come into the industry, um, the Librarians Association is the one who take uh, the role of uh, providing them with continuous professional development. For example, um, when we prepared for IFLA uh, to come in Kuala Lumpur, we had the Young Librarians Knowledge and Leadership Bootcamp. This is when we had that bootcamp in preparation for um, our volunteers that will be helping us uh, during the uh, IFLA 2018. And that bootcamp has continued to go on and continue until now because that was we found out that the young librarians are actually thirsty and really um, wanting to have an avenue for them to develop themselves professionally, as well as in trying to, not just in the professional, but also in leading something. When you talk about leadership, not necessarily that you have to have an organization, but leadership in terms of organizing an event, for example, or able to kind of come up with a network of their peer groups. So that kind of leadership that we're looking into. And of course, with the pandemic, we have been doing a very active in online coaching, online webinars, forums, and dialogues. And these are all done and organized by the young librarians um, uh, in the association. And also, um, when we prepared for IFLA, we have had this annual library um, conference uh, since 2018. Again, this was preparing for our uh, librarians um, in encouraging them to participate uh, and present papers in IFLA. Now, for non-native English speakers um, in, from Malaysia, it's quite daunting for us to present papers in a predominantly English-speaking big conference like IFLA conference. So what we did was, at the national level, we prepared our, our, um, our librarians and we encouraged them to present papers. And even before they present papers, we had several research and writing skills so that they are able to submit their papers to IFLA. And this is being done across the board, working together with the public libraries, working together with their research libraries, for example, and working with academic libraries. And this is being done regionally, not just at one place. At that point of time, um, 
uh, virtual uh, virtual uh, webinar was not really the fashion. We really have to go around the country to have this workshop. And with that, we found out that they are, um, with the promise that they are being given guidance and hand holding, um, they are prepared. Uh, they are willing to uh, to kind of present the papers at IFLA, and also at regional. For example, there's one uh, done uh, in Sarawak. We call it the Sarawak Library Colloquium, and it started as well in uh, 2018, 2017, and that platform was to encourage librarians from Sarawak and from the state libraries to present their papers as sort of a warming up for the presentation uh, in IFLA. So that kind of, um, of, of opportunity for our uh, librarians was something that uh, we found workable in giving them the confidence and giving them the, um, the opportunity to prove themselves that they are able to do it at an international level. And of course, um, through the association, we have been sponsoring um, the members uh, to IFLA and other conferences on one condition, that is they have to have papers to be presented. And recently, um, the association have presented uh, some sort of, um, of um, assistance uh, in, in uh, fees registration for IFLA to encourage them to go and participate in IFLA in Dublin. And we hope that their organization will match uh, what is being offered by our association. Mentoring is very, very critical. We find that having mentors in the field is very helpful and they don't necessarily be in the same organization or in the same geographical location. We find that especially now, mentor mentoring can be anywhere and everywhere. Now, um, with that leadership um, sort of exposure for our members, uh, we empower them to hold and to prove themselves after going through the uh, continuous um, professional development program, we empower them uh, by getting them to voluntarily uh, sort of uh, signing up uh, to host uh, or to want to be in committees, for example, and uh, with by collaborations cross cross i call it uh, cross uh, fertilization of librarians from various types of libraries that also enrich them and sort of uh, boost their confidence uh, uh, amongst themselves we get them to be in uh, in committees and with the uh, annual lib um, one of the, the one of the uh, success factor that we can see was they voluntarily uh, sort of um, volunteer themselves to be committees in the annual uh, librarians uh, conference. Uh, that to me is a, a success indicator over there. And we also empower them through awards, um, through uh, Young Writers Awards, uh, through uh, giving several awards during our annual uh, meeting, for example. Um, and this is where we sort of um, shine the, the young talents among the librarians over here. And through forums and dialogues and webinars uh, also is a platform for them to voice out what they would like to achieve, for example, and what they would like to improve. And especially with, men, uh, with, with, with virtual seminars, it is not too daunting uh, if you are to face and uh, present it uh, in person three-dimensionally. And this is through this empowerment that we encourage them to be uh, participative in quite a number of initiatives, and that gives them the opportunity to lead. In terms of diversity and inclusivity, and if you know Malaysia, if you have been to IFLA 2018, we are already a multiracial, diverse ethnicity, different beliefs. That alone um, is, is the diversity in our, uh, in, in our people over here. But in the library field here, our diversity is in terms of the librarians' participation based on the types of libraries. We have different types of libraries as, as in anywhere uh, in, in other library associations as well. 
and of course a diverse range of uh, age range and also our membership and representative do not just confine to just library per se but we also expand it to other non-libraries but they are related to library work or they can be book suppliers they can be database suppliers for example they can be uh, not really a pure library sort, but they do have uh, information services. So they align themselves to the association. And of course, the, the range of experience by our members is quite varied in the sense that we open it to young, uh, those who are still in library schools, and right up to those who, are, who have retired. As you can see through, through IFLA, we have a lot of retirees amongst us. So that kind of a good mix of the young and the old is a good uh, enrichment platform for us. And that's where the young ones are, are able to find mentors amongst, amongst the members over there. In terms of diversity in work culture, not only are we from the public sector, but also from the private sector as well, and through different types of libraries, and you have different sections of library membership, and this brings about the different types of people, their different work culture, uh, and also different kind of um, uh, methods of um, leadership and methods of uh, managing and, and, and administering uh, an organization. As I mentioned earlier, the diversity in our culture and belief is a very a plus factor for us a way we work together in unity. And with that, we also have diversity in our perspectives. Um, well, that sums up. I was told I was being given 10 minutes, so I just prepared for 10 minutes presentation. And uh, if you have any kind of um, uh, question, you're most uh, welcome to contact me. And that's my email at the end of that um, my slide over here. I really thank um, the opportunity to present in this one. And um, our association has been um, in existence since uh, 1955, and we have gone through about 60 years of, of experience. So we can see the progression of this association from what it was now in from it as it is today. So um, thank you again to the organizing mem uh, organizing committee for inviting us and uh, we will be, I'm open to any questions um, later. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you Rashida for your presentation. We are so happy to have opportunity to listen to uh, about uh, the, of, of the project and work, what you do in Marseilla. That's, that's really great. Thank you again. For, for that. And um, I have only, Loida uh, needs to uh, leave us, but I will try to moderate the, our meeting. And the sound, maybe you can hear in the background these rings, it means that many participants came to our our webinar that's really great we are so happy that you have uh, you were able to join us today today we have over 140 participants so it's a great number and welcome again okay and if you have any technical problems please write down in the chat box and maria and i will be happy to help you with all uh, problems and now uh, there is a time for our next speak speakers uh, Raymond uh, uh, Raymond uh, Wong Kong Kyung director of Macau Library and Information Management Associations and Anna Au PhD candidate and okay so Raymond and Anna the floor is yours yes hello yeah hello. we can hear you great yes. thank you uh, this is Raymond Wong Kokang. I'm the director of the Macau Libraries Association. How you? Uh, I had uh, worked at the library field more than 35 years and worked in this library association more than 26 years too. Macau is a small city. However, this city has around 300 libraries. It seems as library museum here. Hopefully all of you will visit Macau sooner as possible. Now may I introduce my colleague, Ms. Anna Au, to share the major part of presentation. Thank you, um, Anna. Hi, okay, can you hear me? Yes. 
Good, good, good. Yes. So, hi. So, I'm a liaison, liaison for Macau Library Information Association, and I'm here to assist Dr. Raymond Wong with this presentation. So, uh, I would just get started, I suppose. So, our presentation title is Three Things to Do for Our Librarians, and you will know pretty soon. So, a little bit of uh, a little bit about ourselves is that there are 320 libraries in Macau and we have over 600 librarians and given how small Macau is like just less than 33 kilometer uh, kilometer square it's a very impressive because our population is small but we have so many libraries and librarians and our association was established in 1996 and ever since our establishments we have been a member of IFLA and we, uh, in our association, we have 633 individual members. And the thing is, um, most of our librarians are our members because we go, we use our network, we mobilize our network to find fresh graduates and new librarians to, uh, you know, to reach out to them and invite them to be our members. That's why most of our librarians are members of our association. And we also have 10 institutional members. Okay. So in uh, when uh, today uh, when we are looking into uh, like leadership, we were looking to two main dimensions: professional development and networking in the context of Macau. So it may or may not apply to your own context, but we just want to share our experience with you. And uh, okay, so. We have basically uh, five types of ev activities or events for professional development. So we have lectures, conferences, workshops, certification programs, degree programs, uh, and also publications and so on. And okay, let's go to the next slide. And so some highlights are uh, our certification programs and also uh, degree programs. We uh, we partner with institutions within and outside of Macau to bring continuing education opportunities to our librarians so that they can further their professions, such as achieving a master's degree remotely and distantly uh, in Macau. And so that's, uh, like, that's how we enable them to, uh, to just to continue with education and keep learning. And here is a, uh, okay, Okay, I'm seeing this now. Okay, this is uh, this is these are two photos from one of our certification programs, which uh, we collaborate with University of Macau. And this is the uh, uh, reading promoters, uh, reading promoters uh, certification program. And these are uh, some of the photos. Uh, we established this program to specifically train people to, uh, to be reading promoters at primary and secondary schools. And as of now, we have 102 reading promoters at school. And by establishing this, we achieved a lot of positive impacts. For example, we created decent jobs and we, uh, we offer uh, new professionals, or new librarians, so Libraries who are already in service in other libraries, another career option, and as uh, and our association and our association also has an annual reading promoter uh, like promotion pioneer award where reading promoters enter their projects for a competition. After the evaluation of um, review committee, we announce the winners and they will also share the experience and know how with the rest of the library community in a seminar. And yeah, and then these reading promoters, they, they help the schools understand librarianship better. And through this, uh, the voice of school libraries is heard by like the administration and the teachers and the students. And we also keep students curious and interested. And we have evidence that uh, uh, reading promoters uh, bring a lot of positive impact Pack your students, and it can be reflected in the con um, significant continuous increased increase in PISA scores in all three subjects, including reading, mathematics, and science. And then you can see that we have been doing things related to the SDGs even before the SDGs are established, and like this reading promoter, uh, reading promotion, and reading promoters 
uh, program uh, is featured in uh, in Asia o Oceania Division's SDG booklet a while ago. You can also take a look if you are interested. And some, of course, we have some more highlights and conferences uh, and workshops and trainings, and we organized participated or imported activities to Macau so that our library community can access others' knowledge and experience. Some events include uh, the World Library Information Congress, which will be in Dublin this year, the exhibition of the winning entries of the most beautiful books of the world with Goethe Institute Hong Kong and SDG trainings. And of course, we have our own publications and General Assembly. And we move on to the next uh, topic is networking. Networking is uh, networking events can actually be any kind. It does not really need to be specifically a networking event. We consider any event a networking event, as long as we create as long as we create occasions where librarians of all kinds can meet each other at the same level. So they share a common ground and they are able to interact with each other in a com comfortable environment. These events get them out of their regular work environments and create an open environment for them to approach one another to share information, learn about job op opportunities and gain new perspectives. And here are some of our highlights. Uh, some of these activities are not very much explicitly about librarianship, but yeah, they are only library adjacent. However, they offer great opportunity, uh, great uh, opportunities for networking. And according to our informal inquiries, participants really do have lots of fun in these events. Essentially, we are creating a positive social environment, and this is what makes any kind of networking event successful. So here are some of the highlights. This is Macau Library Week. And yeah, we have activities and these are librarians. They are also like, uh, in, like they are not only uh, doing an event for the general public, but they are also seeing other librarians. And we also have, um, uh, we also have like book release uh, events during Macau, Macau Library Week. And here, yeah, here is our direct, director. He's so happy. He's in all of our photos, as you will see pretty soon. And here is our book fair and also activities. And we also have uh, activities for uh, librarians and the general public where like everyone can meet everyone at a shared environment and common ground. And this is the fun part. And we have this every year because Lunar New Year is a very, uh, it's a very significant uh, cultural thing in uh, in Macau, so we have Lunar New Year gathering and people are basically having a meal together, having a great time, look how happy they are. And yeah, and this is uh, the signing in for the events. So all these great things have a caveat and I am going to tell you what that is. So we have to acknowledge that not everyone wants to rise up to a leadership or management position, and they just want a stable and happy work environment where they can continue with their professional development while meeting other librarians. And that is important enough for them, and that's good enough for them, and we really need to acknowledge them, that uh, these two uh, aspects. And yeah, probably a lot of librarians are like that and we cannot forget about them because that would just be exclusion that's not good. So in our library association, when we are planning activities, we always try to make sure that the activities can deliver a great time to our participants. And we ask them how we can do better and what kind of acti activities they would want in the future. So basically we ask for feedback formally and informally. So everyone can have a great time and that's always something for uh, for everyone. Yeah, so that is the networking part. Oh, yes. And okay, so as yeah, I'm reaching 10 minutes already. So we want to summarize. The three things we have to do is to make professional development accessible, such as advocating for remote and distant learning agreements with 
uh, institutions that are within your country or outside or state or any region. So advocate for that as an association. And the next thing is create a comfortable and happy environment where librarians can meet each other. And the last thing is to create activities where people can uh, people can, uh, where people who just want to have a stable job can have a great time together as well. And yeah, so these are the three take home messages and I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you, yeah, you like that. So thank you. You can find us, uh, here. This is our website and our email, and we also have a presentation in this year's world, uh, library information Congress. Feel free to come. Yeah. To see us. So that is all. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Th yeah, thank you, uh, Raymond and, and Anna for your presentation. Uh, that's that's really great to have opportunity to find out more what Library Association do in China and uh, that we are happy that you prepared and had a, a presentation for us. Thank you again. And now I would like to welcome uh, Professor Mohat Kardle, President of uh, India Library Association. And yes, okay. we can hear you. Yes, yes. I'm sharing yes. my screen. Yes. Thank you. Yes, is it visible? Yes, we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just only please remember about this presentation mode. Yes, just. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Everything is perfect. Yes. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, in India, now it is 1.15 p.m. So, good afternoon all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Mohan Kherade, President, Indian Library Association. Uh, recently, I have taken a charge of President, Office of President of Indian Library Association in the month of uh, April this year. Uh, if you just see the structure of Indian Library Association, because Indian Library Association is uh, uh, established in 1933, and it is oldest association in India. So far as structure is concerned, now one president, six vice president, that general president, then one general secretary, six general council members and 14 uh, open council members are there in this association. Apart from this uh, council, uh, executive council is also there and some sectional committees are also there because Indian Library Association is very uh, big association. Uh, in the association near about 10,000 members are there. So, and it is uh, uh, by, uh, scattered all over India and India, you know, it's a big country. So it is a very big association. Uh, myself, Dr. Mohan Kherde, and I'm working as a director knowledge resource center, Santa Gadeg Baba Amravati University, Amravati Maharashtra in India. Uh, first of all, I just take this opportunity to say thanks for giving me opportunity to put my views on this particular topic that is empowering library readers role of allies association from the platform of IFLA. In next 10 minutes, I wish to talk with you all on this empowering library leaders and what will be the role, what should be the role of uh, library association in that case. Uh, friends, today we are in the third decades of 21st century. So far as library is concerned, we are enjoying, all we are enjoying a lab, a hybrid librarianship at present. The professional, those who are in my generation, we feel lucky. We feel lucky that we work. We are working in all type of libraries. Means from we have started our job in traditional library, and today we are um, working in a. Uh, you can say, uh, just a minute, uh, in traditional library, and we are now working in. Uh, you can say. A computer library, we see, we experience 
to work in computerized libraries, automated libraries, digital libraries, virtual libraries, and so many uh, types are there. Uh, but so far as uh, we are working, we are working in uh, hybrid type libraries. Means still we are enjoying digital library. We are also enjoying alternative libraries. We are also enjoying computer libraries and some traditional libraries are also there. Uh, leave it. But uh, one thing is that one thing is common, though the libraries are various kind. But the main job of any library is that to disseminate right information to right user at right time. It means that we have to reduce gap between we have to reduce gap between information and its user, and for reducing this gap, for reducing this gap that is between information users, we have to perform some task that is selection, collection, organization, and dissemination of knowledge or information. Yes, means we are trying to reduce the gap between users and. Uh, its information and try to satisfy our user. So when we are doing all these job, yes, in library, we are doing our job in two parts. One is behind the curtain and one is on the curtain. Some staff working behind the curtain, they are doing a job of selection, collection, organization of information knowledge. And another part, another part of the staff or other staff, they are doing on the curtain, they are discerning the information to the users, means they are working on the curtain. Whatever it may be, on the curtain or behind the curtain, in both the cases, our aim is same. Our ultimate task is same. Our ultimate task is through satisfaction of the user. When we, our ultimate staff is common, that is to satisfy our users. It means that it is a teamwork. And friends, when teamwork is there, in that case, we have to build a team. And when we have to build team, it means that leadership quality is there. Means staff working in the library, they will also be a leader and the librarian also with the leader. Means leadership quality should be there in librarian as well as the staff working under him. So if you just see the quality of the uh, leaders, these are the qualities. Means vision, communication, flexibility, creativity, integrity, dedication, passion, enthusiasm means when we are working as a, we are act as a leader, then in that case, we must have these qualities. But apart from that, because we are talking here about the leadership in library. When we are talking about leadership in library, apart from that qualities, we must have these qualities. That is technical competences. Today, we are working as hybrid library. Yes, means we are handling uh, digital library, we're handling automatic library, we're handling computer library. When we are doing all these things, it means that we must have a quality. We must have a quality. We must know how to handle the ICT, how we can, we can handle the computers. We can handle the technical uh, uh, equipments. So technical competency must be there if you are working in library. Means I am saying that, I'm saying that when you are working in library, in that case, though you are librarian or other library staff, you must have a leadership quality and you must know how to handle the computer, how to handle the equipments. Means technical competency should be there in view. Only technical competency is not sufficient to run the library and to achieve the set goal. Because our set goal is satisfaction of user by providing them the required information. That is our ultimate goal. When we have to achieve that, we have to apply many things in the library. Means we have to apply many things means when we are applying computer, that means you should must have a technical competency. But only technical competency is not sufficient 
to work in the library, act as a leader in the library. Our professional competency should be here. We must be expert in library science also. Unless and until we are not expert in our subject, we cannot, we cannot run library effectively, we cannot act as a leader. So that must be there. After that, professional ethics is must. Because professional ethics, it is, you can say, it is the basic things you must have. You have to apply the ethics. With some ethics, we have to work in the library and then, then we can get success. Next, sense of responsibility. When we are working in a team, as a team, when we are working, person who is working in the team, each and every member must have sense of responsibility. Because library is a system. Means, actually I said that library is working on the curtain and behind the curtain. Both teams are there and the success of libraries depend on both the uh, team. In that case, if anybody is not failed to do their job, if sense of responsibility is absent in any of them, the team will not get success. It means that sense of responsibility is required for working in the library or get success in the library. So, Social is also social uh, uh, equality should be also there. And most important thing is that acceptance of change. Because we know from traditional library to virtual library means at every stage the concept of library is going to be changed. Because in library, ICT tools you are using. And you know that information commercial technology. It is changed day by day, at, I say at every moment. And when you have to apply these ICT equipments in our library, we have to accept these changes. If you're not ability to accept these changes, then you cannot be qualified for working in the library. So who should be the uh, librarian? Who should be the staff member of the library? They must have such kind of quality because we are talking about empowering the library leaders. So what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, you can say, quality should be there in the library, uh, in the leader, in the in librarian, that is important thing. So these are the various qualities that must have in the library. So after that, you see, if you see the career of the librarianship, Career of the librarianship is it just three stages are there. First stage is professional education. When a student enter in the LS education, he entered the LS education, from that point he started his career in the librarianship. So after doing belief or MLIP, because in India, uh, belief is a course and master of library science is a course. That two year course are there. Now, when a certain person enter in the uh, LS education, he started his professional, uh, pro, uh, this library professional. So, in that case, we have to think from that point. We just see that our librarian should be leader. The quality of leader should be inculcated from that point. So, professional education start and our problem means when we are talking about uh, empowering leadership in librarian. So it will start from professional education. After completion of professional education, after completion of education, MLIC, now they will get job. When they will get job in the library, if any kind of library, they enter in the profession. Now when they enter in the profession, now what they taught in the, what is taught and learned in the um, LS education that is not sufficient to work in the library. So when entry is the another uh, part, another stage of the uh, library profession, and after that, up to the up to his retirement, his future career is there. Now considering these four three three uh, stages, 
you just see how to empower library leaders. Now, three stages are there. We just said that first, allies education, entering in the uh, profession and future career, career of the profession. Now, in these three stages, how we can build the leadership, develop leadership in, the, in that particular person that we'll see first. When a person is in the allies education, when he is learning, he is learning in allies education. First of all, we must see our allies curriculum should be need based. We know our what is our future librarianship. Considering the future librarianship, we have to frame our allies curriculum. That is, it should be a need based curriculum. Now, when it need based curriculum means, it means that today we are living in modern library, virtual library, yes, automated library. It doesn't mean that we just concentrate our attention towards the modernization. Apart from that, because we already uh, told you that when library is a leader, he must have, he must be competent in the technical part as well as the basic subject of the library. So while framing the allies curriculum, we must see, we must take care that in the curriculum, some balance is there. It means that basic, basic a traditional subject and modern subject, we have to bridge that gap. That must be there. Then our syllabus must be standardized. Our syllabus must be standardized and uniform because in India, 36 tests are there. And when 36 tests are there, it means that in all state, in all state, the uh, you can say the curriculum should be, it should be a standardized and uniform. Again, I'm saying that I'm talking on the IFLA platform. Now, when a candidate pass out from the uh, allies education, he can get job in other countries also. So what I'm saying that on the allies uh, IFLA platform, I'm just saying that the allies curriculum of each and every countries, it should be uh, standardized and uniform. Certain uh, local variation, you can do it, but it should be there. So that is a uh, framing of need-based strong allies curriculum is essential to make a librarian as a leader. Then conduct short-term courses. Now, what happened? When we are doing MLSC or we are doing BLSC, means graduation or post-graduation in LS education, that curriculum is not sufficient to make that person strong as a librarian. There should be short-term training courses, like you can say a um, uh, uh, certain course of uh, bibliometrics, tricks, then certain course of uh, library networking, a uh, certain course of digital and automation libraries, such kind of short-term courses should be there if we have to empower the library leaders. Then induction program at entry level. Now, when after completion of allies education, now person enter in the career of librarianship. But when he joined the library, he is not, he is not aware about the working atmosphere of that library working conditions of library, job of libraries. In that case, for such a person, those who are entered in the profession, join in the uh, library, there should be induction program for them uh, for up to one month. It should be there so that we can empower library leaders. Then continuous in-service training program is also there for making the uh, library leaders strong because why there should be a continuous in service training program because we know that the concept of library is changing new concept of introducing the library new technology is introducing so cope up with that concept it is essential that these uh, librarians should be strong enough in the, of that particular uh, concept. So such type of uh, continuous in-service pro training program should be there. Then 
soft skill is essential because commission skill presentation skill yes writing skill must be there in the library when he has to become a successful librarian then in that case he must be a expert in soft skill so such kind of soft skill training program should also be there it should be also be organized that uh, if you have to empower the library leaders then organization of academic events means these are the uh, you can say events these are the points if you have to make the library leaders strong we have to empower the library leaders that such kind of event should be organized in the profession and then arrange expert lectures expert lectures also there because what happened seniors uh, experience count for the juniors so in that case expert lecture should be there then most thing is that research because when we have to run library effectively then in that case in that case we have to conduct in library we have to conduct user study then uh, you case studies yes many times we have to uh, just install uh, introduce new system in the library in that case he must be library must have analytical thinking so ls research is very important for making the library leaders uh, strong now if you just see what the role of uh, uh, ls education ls associations so as per my knowledge what is my opinion my opinion is that ls association library association must concentrate their uh, their attention on that four points first is human resource development means ls education must see when they how to make empower the library leaders in that case these are the four points where library association must concentrate their attention first human resource development second attempt to reach up to the end professional by conducting academic events on regional level when i am thinking that india is a very big country now in that it is not possible to reach up to the end a library professional it is very difficult because some part is remote area in india it is not possible to reach up to the uh, remote place but but it is a responsibility of library association to conduct such kind of uh, academic events and reach up to the uh, remote uh, area that is another thing when you have to build up because when we have to build the library leaders then don't think that only the librarians who are working in high class libraries they should be leader and others are should not be because some small libraries also there for public libraries also there the librarians working that in public libraries small libraries a school libraries these li these librarians should be a strong leader so that they can do proper services to its user then safeguard the status of professionals because when we are thinking about the uh, leader means we are uh, empowering the quality of leadership in the uh, librarian in that case library association should take care that they must safeguard the status of the professional unless and until librarians are not getting uh, good salary and good status they cannot concentrate their attention in developing the library so giving status to the professional it is the responsibility of uh, library associations and then exchange of manpower what happens suppose a person working in a small library yes when that person visit to another library big library and see the work culture of that library he can get experience from that big library and he can adopt this in his particular his library so in that case exchange of manpower exchange of program should be there it should be uh, conducted such kind of program should be conducted by allies associations now so far as uh, library association is indian library association is there 
what are the steps taken by indian library association number 1 indian library association organize annual conferences every year since last year indian library association organized 67 annual conferences at national level but these conferences are for the librarians but i already told that in library only librarian is not working apart from librarian library staff is also there unless and until library staff is not getting much knowledge he is not expert in ict he is not expert in uh, you can say subject librarian cannot run library successfully and effectively so that's why that's why for library staff also such kind of academic program should be conducted in collaboration with regional and state professional association because in india indian library association is working at national level but so many associations are there working in the in india some state associations there some subject associations are there some regional associations are there some association are working in university level means so many associations are there and it is not because all associations this in uh, association working on university level they are just working for the uh, librarians those who are working in the college libraries and public libraries in under that university but it is not possible for indian library association means it is national association it is not uh, possible for national level association like indian library association to just see the you can say uh, demand of that particular librarians in that case it is a job of indian library association to conduct small uh, training program for such a library staff at regional level and it is not possible for indian library association to uh, conduct such kind of uh program at regional level so in that case the help should be taken by that particular inner professional association so that is excuse uh, me thing. excuse mm -hmm. me mohan and we are a little um, time to for yes yes i know i know that's why yes yes okay. i know right, right. that's why right. then uh, second yes, uh, second is uh, organize seminar conferences so uh, this can be done with the help of uh, state association and regional association then introduce need based certificate courses so indian library association is uh, decided to introduce need based certificate courses to make uh, the library leaders a uh, strong then again prepare guideline for libraries in the form of library manual that is also another uh, step taken by indian library association to make uh, the library leaders strong then attempt to improve the research quality of library and info science by organizing special guest lectures workshop and seminar then identify thrust areas with the help of experts to motivate uh, new researchers to en uh, engage in the research in diversified subject then attempt to establish accreditation system in ls uh, education so thank you thank you very much for giving me opportunity to uh, put my views uh, uh, for uh, empowering library leadership thank you very much thank you so much thank you Thank you, um, Professor Mohan, for your presentation. And uh, we've just listened a free presentation, and we are in the middle of our first part, and we are waiting for the next three. So uh, let me welcome our next speaker, uh, Kim Tonga, President-elect uh, Alianza from New Zealand, from uh, Auckland. So Kim, the floor is yours. Kia ora, thanks Magdalena, Lena. Uh, just one moment while I share my screen. Oh my gosh, one moment. Okay, have you got that Magdalena? Yes, yes we can Okay, see awesome. Thank you. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, kia ora, tēnā koutou, tēnei ahi ahi, kia ora na koutou katoa toa, ko Raratonga e mingaia mai tōku papa, ko Ireland mai tōku mama, ko Kim Taonga tōku ingoa, ko o te president-elect o te rauheringa o Aotearoa. 
Hello everyone. My name is Kim Tonga. I'm the president-elect of the Lianza, of Lianza, the Library and Information Association, New Zealand Aotearoa. Uh, um, kia ora and thank you. Oh, I'm, I also mentioned that my dad is from Rarotonga and Mangaia in the Cook Islands and my mum is Irish. So kia ora and thank you. Loida and Ifla Emlas for the opportunity to speak at this webinar and warm greetings to everyone here online. It's evening here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm acknowledging my colleagues online and also all the speakers so far. So much to think about, about leading library associations and library leadership. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge one moment. I'm just trying to share my slides properly. Magdalena, is it? Can you see that? Sorry. <laughs> um, firstly, I would like to acknowledge that here in Aotearoa for the first time this coming Friday, we are celebrating the Māori New Year, Te Matahi o Te Tau, and the rising of Matariki, the star cluster, which signals the Māori New Year with, for the very first time, a national public holiday. Traditionally, this is a time to remember loved ones, give thanks for the year that has passed, to plan for the coming year and to celebrate with family and friends. So this is an auspicious time and evening for Aotearoa and as I'm president-elect and our handover to president ceremony is next week, it's a great time to very briefly speak of Leanza's past, present and future and hopes for the future as related to leadership opportunities and fostering inclusive practice and diversity. Firstly, a little bit of context um, uh, to give you an idea of how Lianza is organized. Um, we are actually a hundred, uh, more than a hundred years, we've been in existence for more than a hundred years. Um, we are the National Library Association and a cross-sector organisation, but there are, are other sector groups, with, such as Public Libraries New Zealand, uh, School Libraries New Zealand, some law library groups um, in New Zealand as well. So importantly, um, with this slide, you will see at the base of the whare or house is Te Rōpū Whakahau, which is the national body representing Māori librarians, Māori, the Indigenous people or tangata whenua of Aotearoa New Zealand. So very importantly, Lianza and Te Rōpū Whakahau have had a partnership agreement since 1995 and anything we do in the inclus inclusive, oops, sorry, <laughs> inclusive diverse leadership space uh, should be done alongside and with our partner organisation. The partnership has developed and grown over the years, but this year for the first time in the mutually agreed change to our governance structure. Um, representatives of Te Rōpū Whakahau are not part of the quorum sitting at the Lianza Council table. As I'm sure many of you out there will identify with, librarians with Indigenous expertise and cultural competence are asked to participate in pretty much everything. So our partners said they felt they did not have to sit at the council table anymore, still partners, but 27 years later, we need to do things together, but in, not in the same way. We are starting that discussion in this new year, and this will continue to influence how Lianza can lead in an inclusive and respectful way in Aotearoa. So, Lianza has around 960 personal members and 215 institutional members. And there are around 7,000 people working in the library sector in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We have three people working in our Lianza office. Um, our executive director, who's online, kia ora, uh, and a, comms, a comm comms manager and an office manager. And everyone else on council that you can see in this picture uh, are volunteers. So, in terms of leadership opportunities for our members, there are numerous, albeit voluntary. Um, you could be on Lianza Council, hold elected positions, work on various working groups, cross-sector groups, the Lianza Professional Registration Board, and our special community, and our special interest community groups. We also offer opportunities for people to show leadership by presenting to peers 
from peer sharing at network meetings to leading some of our webinars or presenting at national conference. But we still have work to do on making these opportunities a space where different voices and diverse thinking can come together in a safe, inclusive space and in different ways. And in my presidential year ahead, I, year ahead, I want to focus on this. I'm going to speak about the Lianza 29 National Conference, where we did do things a little differently with one of our special interest groups. Uh, this is a, a picture of a couple of things at that conference. So about that conference, one of our special interest groups is the Pacific Information Management Network, made up of librarians from New Zealand, but associated with other librarians in the wider Pacific Islands. Um, and this special interest group put a, put a proposal in to convene the conference as a group based on collective responsibility for convenership, rather than an individual based effort. I am a member of the special interest group, but other people did all the work on this. So the inclusive collective approach recognised that our strength comes from many, not from one. Elisua se lolo e se e which literally is coconut oil is made from many, not one coconut, or many hands make light work. Similarly, authority and power come through totua, service, servant leadership for families and library communities. The conference drew on Pacific Indigenous models or frameworks of working and worked with the theme, our families, our communities, our libraries, and wider Pacific communities and families were an integral part of the conference because family and community are important to the life of libraries. Without them, we would have no libraries or librarians and we would not have had a conference. So the traditionally one person convenership role was taken by a core group of people as a collective with two advisors, including, of course, Māori advisors. Um, it acknowledged that membership is diverse. We bring different skills, knowledge and experience to the undertaking. Part of the reasoning behind this was that a major finding from our national 2009 survey was that there are a lack of people from the Pacific in information in the information management industry and in leadership positions in the Library Association. Um, and our library, so not also not reflective of the demographics of New Zealand. So we wanted to, there's a, there are many ways of why we want, many reasons we wanted to run the conference in this way. One is around encouraging Pacifica librarians into Leanza leadership roles. I could speak for quite a while on this, but my point is intentionally thinking about different ways to do things, meeting in different ways to hear our members and librarians on marae, in a hui, in a whonu to talanoa, which is discuss in a Māori or Pacific way, in different cultural contexts will strengthen our leadership and embrace and engage and enable more librarians into the association with a reciprocity and value for everyone. Le Leanza is also taking a lead and some joined up thinking across the Glamier sector. So Glamier, G-L-A-M-M-I-R, um, an acronym that includes galleries, libraries, archives, museums, marae, iwi, which is tribe, and records. Um, we hosted an online hui. Um, this slide is just example of some of the hui that we do host, but this particular one showed that one of the key learnings and collaborative opportunities was around mātauranga Māori, which is Māori knowledge, Indigenous knowledge, and knowledge and understanding of te ao Māori, the Māori world, where everyone, and so where everyone acknowledged we need to do more work here. I am not New Zealand Māori. My family, as I said, are Cook Island Māori and Irish, and I am not anyway an expert, an expert, but I am on a language and learning journey, which I want to do alongside my new council, coming in next week, who work, work, work in libraries all over the countries, well, across the sectors and across the sectors. So I finished tonight on another Matariki Māori New Year slide because learning and understanding and knowledge of the Māori world is absolutely crucial to leading a library association in New Zealand Aotearoa 
and indigenous knowledge and respect and understanding must be super important and aid to lead in every other library association in the world. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora. Kia ora, Magdalena. Thank you very much for your presentation, Kim. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to, to hear uh, more about uh, your projects uh, of Library Association New Zealand. And we are going further. And so now I would like to welcome Lauren Pei from Fiji Library Association. Uh, she is with us. Lauren, can you turn on your camera? Uh Camera yeah. and the microphone. Yes, I can hear you. Sure. Can you. Can you hear me? Yes, Bula we can. Kata. Yeah, we can I hear you. Can see me just yet. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, and we can see you as well. Okay, so uh, you can share your screen with your presentation from your computer. Okay, uh, can you see my screen now? Uh, just a few seconds. Yes, we can see your PowerPoint. You can on, only just click on the presentation mode and we will see your presentation. Sorry. So on the um, uh, presentation mode, it's uh, this icon, small icon on the down, on the bottom uh, with the table. With the table. Yeah. That's uh, uh, on the bottom, uh, you can click on the down and there are a few icons. Uh, it's, I think it's about presentation. And if you can see this kind of a screen, it means presentation mode. It's near minus and plus on the l l uh, right. Yeah, that, uh, no, 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 go to the left. Oh, that's, that's it. Is it? Yes, that just click and we will see it, it, it has to work. Yes, excellent. Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bula um, Vinaka, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Loida, for having me uh, on this session. Um, it has been exciting to hear all the wonderful uh, work done by the different associations across. Uh, associations and uh, starting to hear all the new developments. Um, I am, uh, briefly, I am Lorraine Pai from uh, Fiji Library Association and Secretary for the Fiji Library Association. And also I'm currently the coordinator for the Library Information Studies. <clears throat> Uh, just a brief history of uh, the association. Um, we were established back around about 19, in the 1970s, 1974. And that's just a brief uh, uh, the objectives of the uh, Fiji Library Association and how we have been operating over the years. Now, in terms of capacity building and development initiatives, empowering our, our members on the local platform, we've had uh, the opportunity to uh, have uh, our, our previous uh, president, um, Mr. Conrote, as our library patron. We've had uh, public uh, awareness programs where we were invited to uh, participate and advocate the role of libraries. And uh, in many cases where the uh, council members were not, or the council president or the uh, vice president was not able to uh, attend the sessions, they would encourage the council members to attend and represent the uh, association. So this was um, a way of empowering our council members and also members of the association. We hosted a host uh, evenings uh, with, uh, in collaboration with the corporate stakeholders and the NGOs and also youth groups 
in the communities to engage, uh, to engage with them and see how libraries can contribute to their, um, the, their, their work in the, organize, in the organizations as well as to the community. It was great because we were able to uh, understand more of what the community was facing and how libraries can contribute to uh, their development. We also participated at national events and we were also fortunate during our webinar sessions. We had the Minister for Education joining us uh, during the COVID uh, period. We were not able to have face-to-face -face, uh, um, meetings, but we were able to use the, the uh, virtual platforms to reach out to our stakeholders. And it was, um, it was a good opportunity because we had uh, sessions with the uh, corporate sectors where we can use uh, their services and interchangeably to empower uh, the uh, dissemination of information uh, within our community. And so that was really good to have the Minister uh, for Education joining us and to uh, share, to enlighten us on uh, the uh, state's perspective on the role of the library. We also had a national survey, a library survey, so that we can understand, engage more on the different uh, uh, challenges that the libraries uh, across the, uh, the country were facing. So uh, the different professionals in terms of school libraries, public libraries, all the different challenges, we were able to gather stats from there and uh, uh, collect in it collate and make a decisions on how we can better serve our members in the community. Uh, we also provided uh, advisory guidance in terms of library setup, uh, library policies for corporate uh, libraries, uh, for school libraries. Uh, we also, in terms of empowering our young pro professionals, uh, we uh, provide partial sponsorship uh, to uh, both our local academic uh, institutions that provide uh, um, library courses, uh, particularly through the Pacific TAFE at the University of the South Pacific. We uh, provide uh, uh, for our sponsorship for students there as well as the Fiji National University Library. We uh, also, furthermore, we also did uh, the, we also uh, participate, sorry, on the Library Information Studies Program as a committee member where the uh, programs is being reviewed and we get the um, members of the uh, council attend the sessions to provide advice as well. The um, also FLA also uh, provides uh, information research skill sessions to empower our members. And we also have other um, workshops not, not mentioned in this presentation, but we've been running sessions to empower them and uh, to give them also the opportunity to share with us the different types of uh, challenges and skills that they lack and they would like us to uh, assist them with. Okay, so we would get the professionals um, from uh, the um, academic libraries here at USP and also to our, um, to the National, uh, Future National University Library. And then we will also collaborate to provide these uh, services and uh, activities for our members. On the international platform, we've had the opportunities uh, in terms of empowering our members to participate at the uh, IFLA president's uh, uh, sessions. But we've also had the opportunity to, opportunity to have the uh, IFLA president to uh, uh, send, uh, give us a Fiji Day message. And that was really uh, exciting for our uh, members here in Fiji. Uh, it was good to see uh, Ms. Chris, Christine McKenzie uh, give her uh, Fiji Day message. And um, we've uh, also uh, in the past, our council members also gave the opportunities to our council members, members of uh, the Fiji Library Association to participate at um, emerging leading sessions on IFLA, IFLA um, Pacific Libraries Network, our global future, um, IES Summit with the SDGs, and um, attending the uh, Lianza and ALIA conferences. So uh, providing this exposure uh, to our members 
would empower them, bring back into the uh, to the council as well as to the uh, association members on the skills and knowledge that they have gained uh, from these uh, sessions. Our future plans, um, given the current COVID uh, situation, and um, now that we are uh, we are coming back into uh, more contact, uh, we would like to uh, strengthen our partnership with our local and international stakeholders, try to review our library policies and benchmark against international standards, working together with the states, placing Fiji on the global map, working towards achieving the uh, sustainable development goals, increasing our membership, and um, in the uh, similar to uh, New Zealand, we also uh, use social media to advocate the role and function of the library through our Talanoa or dialogue session. We have a lot of these sessions, uh, little pocket Talanoa sessions in the community or in our public libraries and school libraries um, um, gatherings. So uh, we use this, these avenues to reach out uh, to our members on the ground and also to empower them and how they can uh, further um, develop their knowledge and skills through the current library studies, as well as through uh, further studies with uh, um, Australia and New Zealand at the moment. Uh, we also uh, work with the uh, library, uh, library information coordinators um, for both uh, uh, academic institutions that provide the, these library courses uh, to recruit students from the Pacific region through Pacific tape at the University of the South Pacific and to our local students uh, uh, for the Fiji National University courses. Now here I'm just sharing with you uh, members of our um, council members and the different activities that we have participated uh, on and there's more but uh, given the time that we have I hope that the uh, presentation that um, that I have just uh, given you, will just share with you a little bit about how Fiji Libraries, Fiji Library Association is operating right now. And I'm glad to say that we are, um, we are getting back to on, uh, on track after the COVID where we were not able to meet each other. Now we are meeting, we are meeting each other through our Talanoa sessions uh, with uh, the members. And uh, thank you once again for, uh, for uh, listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, that's my email address there. And we are also on Facebook and Messenger. So those are the platforms that we uh, also communicate with our members. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Yeah, thank you, Lauren, for your presentation. It was great to, to know uh, more uh, what Library Association in Fiji uh, uh, prepares and, and does uh, as well. Thank you again. And uh, next, our last speaker in this part, Dilara Begum uh, from Bangladesh Library Association. And after Dilara presentation, we will have a part uh, with discussions, but I will uh, explain more after the presentation. So Dilara, floor is yours. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can share it. Yeah, we can see your presentation. Yeah, yeah let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, yeah, everything is fine. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and good afternoon from Bangladesh. Uh, this is Dr. Dilara Begum. I actually, I'm working as a uh, associate professor and uh, acting librarian at East Coast University, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And I am uh, very much actively involved with library associations of Bangladesh. And uh, also IFLA, I'm the chair of the Professional Division Chair C, and uh, have been involved with IFLA during last uh, more than 10 years. So today I'm going to uh, uh, present uh, uh, the associations, especially Bangladesh Library Associations, what we're doing and how, um, what are the activities actually going on. So the title of my presentation is Empowering Library Leaders and the Diversity Worldwide, it's Bangladesh Perspectives. So, um, if you think about the, uh, any profession, you know, the leadership and the networking are the key component to develop any profession. So library professions are playing a very vital role to, to develop our professions. So in that case, uh, we are very lucky. We have uh, Bangladesh Library Association in Bangladesh. We, they work nationally 
and of course uh, try to collaboration with uh, you know globally and you know the association of a wide range of opportunities that can lead the develop uh, the skills uh, make the various opportunities to build the relationships with different stakeholders so that we can ultimately reach our goal so that's why i can i, I we think associations is a very uh, you know uh, vital factor for any any uh, professions so in bangladesh basically uh, uh, the prominent two associations are over here one is library association of bangladesh we call it lab it ab and balich that means bangladesh association of librarians information scientists and documentalists so i'll try to give you the brief description about lab and the balich what kind of activities we are doing in bangladesh uh, so bangladesh library association it's basically it's a national organization it was established in 1956 uh, the main aim is to development of uh, library and these professions, librarianship, and of course, the library science education in our country. Uh, I have been involved with this, uh, uh, you know, association during last uh, couple of, uh, I think it's more than 15 years. So I have a very, you know, in-depth information regarding library association. I was active, uh, acting uh, library association president. It was in 2010. Then before that, I was work as a woman affairs secretary, then I also work at a, as a vice president of, of Bangladesh Library Association. Um, and you know, the main aim of this association is to uh, work and improve the fortune of the library professions in this country, to improve their professional skills, working environment, field of work, designation, and quality of the rank. Because you know, we are facing a lot of problem in, 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 in our profession. So library association actually working as a lobbyist for, for this profession. Uh, and uh, is it, is some of the achievement I have actually uh, shown is in my slide. Uh, you can see some of the highlighted activities. As I mentioned, we are doing a lot. And, um, and this is very, very uh, innovative work we have done with the government. Uh, I think it's after 2010, I think in uh, in 2010 only, we work very hard and we try to negotiate with the government and we have actually created 32,500 posts okay, that is on libraries and information professionals for, for that post. That is created and the government of Bangladesh is very much, you know, uh, uh, said that they are cooperators and they created 32,500 libraries, including uh, school libraries, college libraries, and madrasa libraries. So this is a huge achievement of Bangladesh Library Association. Uh, another achievement, uh, as they work as a lobbyist, they, they try to give the you know, prestigious position for the librarian. So they have given the equal status to the librarianship as a teacher. That is also very unique, uh, unique uh, you know, achievement is done by uh, our, my association, the lab. So that is uh, basically uh, the, the, the scope is the school, college, and madrasa. Because in our country, we have a, a madrasa education also, Ma, a madrasa education, college, and school. So it's, it's, it's the combination of school, college, and madrasa. Uh, and, uh, and of course, being a session, they are trying their level best to do something uh, better for this profession, uh, the uh, library session of, of Bangladesh. We are providing consulting services for the automation digitalization. Those who wanted to make their library digitalized or automated, uh, we try to help that we have a, a technical group. That technical group actually help the other professions to develop their digital collections or uh, to make the library work uh, automated. Uh, training is, 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 is very much needed for any professions. So they do organize, uh, different kind of training program for the professional development. This include the um, soft skills included also over there. Soft skills now is very important for your job purpose. Um, and uh, in, in from the association, we are providing certificate course that is for six months. And we are providing a diploma degree uh, that is for uh, one year degree from uh, the Library Association of Bangladesh. And um, 
And uh, we are also, it's proposed to set up uh, a libraries in the primary schools and recruit professionals. We are uh, actually negotiating with the government. We try to, uh, you know, uh, give them the impression or give them the right way because the every school, they should have a librarian and they have to recruit the professionals, not not from the other people, other professionals, professionals can do work as a librarian. So we are trying our level best to, to do this. And from the Library of Bangladesh, we also publishing an international journal. The journal names is uh, the Eastern Librarian, that is international journal. Um, this journal is uh, basically published uh, bi biannually. Uh, so two copies uh, in, in, in a year. And, and uh, basically, uh, basically it, it, the recent issue is it was published in 2021, I think, uh, 22. Some of the innovative work that they are trying to do for these professions, um, you know, if you wanted to do something, finance is very important. Without budget, you cannot do anything. So the Library Association of Bangladesh, they are actually, uh, you know, try to build a security programs. We call this financial security programs and welfare fund, uh, so that for emergency purpose, we can, you know, uh, if we create a fund, we can do something. Uh, we can do a lot of activities through that fund. And one of the, I think it's a little bit different initiatives taken by the uh, Library Association of Bangladesh. We call it, uh, uh, the program name is Librarians Poli. It's the pol Poli means uh, it's a village or, 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 or yeah, it's a village. So what we are doing, we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to provide the low cost accommodation for these professionals, those who wanted to join in this Librarians Poli. Um, you can see in the picture, uh, as I mentioned before, as a library session, uh, we do organize this international seminar conferences and symposiums. So uh, the, in this picture, you can see I was there as a president, acting president of Bangladesh Library Session, and uh, I was sharing that program. And you can see our honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was there as a, a chief guest. So that uh, you know conference was a huge success because at least we can. Uh, Go close to the uh, go close to the government people. Uh, high, uh, highest body, the prime minister was with us that time, and 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 uh, we have uh, mentioned that it's called Vision 2020. The title of this international seminar it was uh, it was uh, role of libraries for building digital Bangladesh in 2012. And prime minister was so much happy to see our activities, uh, what we're doing, and she really appreciated our work. And uh, recently we have organized uh, uh, international conference that is on role of allies professionals in the port industrial revolution that is in 2020 to 2022 in February. And, and, in, and in that conference, I work, I was there as a convener of that conference and the uh, Ministry of Education, Minister of Education and other other ministers also over there as the chief guest. I think more than uh, almost 4,000 participants was, was there. And that was like a hybrid mode online and then the physical presence. It was a huge success. And it's I think more than 32 uh, foreign participants also present, presented over there as a speaker. And you'll be happy to know uh, the Barbara uh, Gibson is also over there, the president of uh, library session IFLA. Um, she was there as a, a keynote speaker. She was on the online, but she was uh, with us in online as a keynote speaker of this international conference. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have another association that is called BALID. BALID means uh, Banish Association for Librarians, Informed Scientists, and Documentalists. It was actually established after lab in, 2000, in 1986. Basically, um, uh, the, the aim of this uh, association is Actually, uh, they work for uh, for the allies professionals. Um, try to establish a, you know integrated national information system. They are working on that. They also try to help uh, try to you know do some work on improvement of status of the librarians, information scientists, and documentalists. Documentalists who is working in the country and how to enhance the improvement quality at workforce. They also work the uphold the rights of the professionals, professional librarians in Bangladesh. 
modernizing the library of Bangladesh, you know, services of Bangladesh or libraries, information documentation centers to all sector of the country. So it's a very uh, innovative work they are doing uh, from 1986. Some of the activities that is done by a pallet, I have given the pictures over there. Uh, they have arranged different kind of training for professional development for allies professionals. You can see some of the images, they, uh, we uh, organize the community communication skills for 21st century for library professionals. And you can see the pro library professionals as over there, they join over there. And national seminar on prospect of digital resource management step to us to digital Bangladesh. And they also will organize this kind of, you know, workshop and seminar regularly. Some other event, uh, the, uh, the role of in library professionals in creating good citizen and combating terrorism. They also organize uh, this, uh, you know, workshop, informal literacy and advocacy, narrowing knowledge gap. That is another activity is done by Palit, and uh, they celebrated the Silver Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee. Here you can see, uh, rather than this association, I am privileged to say something about East West University. What we are doing, being uh, active, you know. You know, member of the IFLA and Library Association of Bangladesh, we are we try to level best to do something for this profession in our country. So, Department of Information Studies and Library Management at this University organized actually self facilitated dis discussion on IFLA Global Vision that was held in 2018. And in this uh, in this uh, you know the uh, workshop, the different um, people came here. They shared their own ideas and knowledge. Uh, from the public library, from from uh, academic library, from special library, so from every corner, every part of the different kind of library, they came and they shared their ideas and knowledge over there. So we shared that uh, we create a report from Bangladesh and we send it to IFLA in the in the, uh, in their global ideas. So I think it is very much helpful to know about Bangladesh people, Bangladesh library stations, and what we're doing in in our country. So IFLA uh, actually. Um, appreciated uh, uh, appreciated for this kind of work. Here you can see, as I said, diversity and networking is very important for any associations. So we are trying our level base to do something better for this profession. You can see in the middle of the picture, um, our chief advisor, Dr. Mohan Parashudin, sir, is over there with us and with some foreign students. Uh, you'll be happy to know uh, in our department, in, in the Atistros University, we have introduced information studies and library management. That's four years degree courses, uh, uh, honors course we, we call in, in, in this university. And the, some of the foreign students from Bhutan, uh, they actually uh, enroll over here as a student. So this is sort of like collaboration between two countries. And some um, information professionals are coming to our country, so taking the degrees, uh, especially in information uh, studies and library management. So this is also a, a big achievement from from our part. Um, collaboration is over there, and we can learn from there what we be and how we can work together. And I don't want to uh, say any more. But if you have any questions, so I'll be happy to answer your queries. But I strongly believe. Leadership is a function of knowing yourself, having a vision that is well communicated, building trust among colleagues, and taking effective action to realize your own leadership potentials. I have taken this quote from Warren Benis, Professor Warren Benis, he said, and I also believe in this. So thank you very much. Thank you for being with me. So uh, any question, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you for inviting me in this very important for forum. And I'm very grateful to the organizer and, uh, and, and I feel honored. So thank you, the audience who are listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dilara, for your presentation and, and your thanks. And I would like to thank you to all our speakers uh, for their presentation. And now uh, we, I would like to invite all participants to uh, take part in our active uh, discussions in breakout rooms. So uh, you can uh, open your microphones and also cameras in the rooms and I will uh, open breakout rooms. We will have today uh, five uh, breakout rooms 
two in English. So moderate moderators for English rooms uh, will be Maria Simonovic and I. The second two rooms, uh, moderators will speak in Chinese. So moderators will be Helen Chan and Tina Yang. And the last one, a uh, room in uh, Bahasa. And uh, the moderator would be, will be Muhammad Akmal Ahmad. Okay, so in the breakout rooms, uh, moderators will moderate uh, our discussions. Feel free to open your cameras and microphones and share your experience and talk with us. Okay, so give me a few seconds to open the rooms. And okay, we have 15 minutes for discussions and you will see uh, one minute before the ending, uh, some alerts that we will uh, uh, finish. Okay, so I opened all rooms and probably you will see the list uh, with the name of the rooms. Please join to, to, to which room you would like to, to, to come. So the rooms are open. Uh, Zoom needs a few seconds to uh, open all the rooms to our participants and please feel free to join. Yeah, probably you will see the rooms in the end of our list. And from this time, 15 minutes for this for discussion. Okay, so if you have any problems, pl please write on the chat because I'm going to my room. Okay, we are back. Just a few minutes to give our participants. Uh, I would like to ask our moderators to turn uh, only the cameras and microphones. We have a few minutes to uh, prepare some a summary of our discussions to point what was uh, what was important. Okay, I see that there is Maria and also Helen. Tina, yeah, I see. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. And also uh, Muhammad Akmal Ahmad. I hope that the camera will, yeah, yeah, hello. Hello. Okay, so great. I think that all our moderators with, uh, are with us today. So there is a time for quick a uh, summary of our discussions. Uh, we were discuss uh, we were discussing about talking about leadership skills, about some practice recommendations and the needs of librarians. Uh, could I ask my moderators about a few a few words about summary? Who would like to start? Maria. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you. So microphone is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, we had uh, pretty shy people on, on the group, but we uh, also had a chance to talk about uh, this subject. So uh, just shortly uh, regarding to practice, uh, we talked about uh, that it's important to uh, know how to advoc advocate to and with stakeholders uh, for better policies, uh, IT sector and human rights. Uh, recommendation here is to have good communication with members within library association and cooperation between associations on national and regional level. And uh, some kinds of needs uh, uh, is, for example, that we have to be aware of world outside, how the world functions with, uh, outside the uh, library field, so that we can get some uh, programs, uh, we can become politically aware, how to talk to stakeholders and how to uh, advocate, uh, advocate for the library and librarians. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Maria, for your summary. And uh, Helen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. It's nice to see uh, everyone here today. Um, I'm Helen, Helen Chen, the EFLA Professional Division Committee Chair, Division F. I'm from Hong Kong, and I'm also the ex um, Education and Training Officer of the Hong Kong Library Association and the ex Vice Chair of Hong Kong. Um, Teacher Library Association. I'm really glad to hear lots of uh, really wonderful sharing from the speaker today about the development of association from the country. And I learned a lot, uh, such as uh, the development of the um, librarian journals and also the uh, supporting the professional training, including diploma course or the Bachelor of Science in Library and Information and Management, or even the master degree program. So it's very exciting to know all about this. And for me, I think um, for our group, there is no one. Actually, you don't need me today because this everyone can speak very fluent English right over here, I'm sure. So, um, but just some sharing for myself uh, after um, uh, uh, you know reflect on what I lot from today's um you know event and then um I, I i think it is also very important for the association to support um you know different perspective of the lab, uh, librarianship uh especially um uh catering the different people's needs uh from the library services and then uh, we know uh, everywhere even in hong kong we have the underprivileged people we have uh, people with special needs and especially in the Asian countries we seems like run out of the support to the library services to um, to different people with different abilities that is what I, I want to say right over here and I'm grateful of having the opportunity to share my my reflections right here with all of you and also participate in today's event and wish all the library association very success in any uh, endure today and in the future thank you so much yeah, thank you, Helen, for this point. And Tina. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tina Yang. Mm -hmm. I'm from uh, University of Hong Kong. I'm also a committee member. Of, uh, I'm also a committee member of uh, the regional division of Asia and Oceania. So uh, we had uh, three people in the breakout zone: um, uh, Anna and Raymond and, and myself. So um, actually, we, we discussed about the uh, best practice um, for library association. Um, so um, we think that professional development and capacity building is very important for both uh, se seasoned professionals and also the new library, new professionals. So this is very important. We can see that um, um, each Library Association um, put this on a very high uh, as very high priority on the, on the agenda. And also we think that um, to enable, uh, uh, to uh, collaborate, collaborate, collaboration is very important. Um, so partnership with uh, other libraries and institutions and organizations can, um, can maximize uh, the impact of the library association and library services and also librarians and um, and another thing we think is important is to in, um, to um, to to engage and connect with uh, with the people in the library field uh, so networking networking with uh, um, connect with the new librarians when they when they just join librarian and encourage them to join the library association and also connect with the fresh graduates of library schools and also you know encourage them to join the library association so those are the few um, points uh, we would like to share with us yeah thank you tina for that and for moderating discussion and uh, the last uh, moderator i see yeah yes uh then, you know, so we just uh, had a uh, good discussion amongst 14, 14 participants. Uh, one, one formula, one suggestion that we get is uh, library associations and uh, librarians need to continue to strengthen uh, the movement to understand further the underprivileged and marginalized uh, people, especially 
uh, against the non-majority racist people. Uh, we need to strengthen uh, value ethnicity, ethnic background, religious belief, and social values at the bottom uh, local residents uh, Libyans. Uh, that's all, Magdania. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for moderating uh, the discussion. And I will end uh, our summaries of the discussions with mine. I can only say that uh, in my discussion, uh, we ha we mentioned also about uh, about uh, different kinds of leadership. We talk a lot uh, today about that and also about uh, collaboration and networking uh, uh, between librarians and also about practice that we need to practice this skill. Thank you all moderators for your work and now there is a last part of our webinar and uh, we have two presentations uh, in front of us so uh, now I would like to welcome Kathy Ward Burton. Hello. Um, and yeah, hello, and uh, Kathy, so uh, microphone is yours. If Thank you have you. a presentation, you can I share. Should. Sure, okay. yeah, I'll share it now. Yeah, great. Yeah, we see. You can see Anything. that? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you very much, Magdalena, and to the um, to the um, IFLA, you know, this um, region for um, the Asia and Oceania region for inviting me to speak today. Uh, I'm coming from a, a different perspective, I suppose, from everybody else in that I'm just, I think I'm in week three or four of my, my role at ALIA, CEO at ALIA, the Australian Library and Information Association, and I don't come from a library background. So um, I've been asked today to talk about my path to leadership and um, what that has sort of looked like and how that's relevant to libraries and a number of things that other speakers have have talked about um, have really resonated with my experiences outside the library sector which I think is interesting uh, and something that in my short time with Alia that um, I've really noticed about sort of the library and information sector within Australia at least but also you know, hearing today um, from other countries is that there's well, something that's... quite special with um, the library sector where I think there is this um, natural sort of uh, feeling people have about helping each other in collaboration because that's often what the space of a library is for the community, whichever the community that is that it works within. And I think that's not something to take for granted because a lot of other sort of industries and professions don't have that as a starting point. So I think um, that's a really powerful, powerful thing and, and fits in with, I suppose, the type of leader um, that I want to be. So today I thought, um, let's see if this, there you go. Um, I'm gonna talk um, just about four different um, points here, um, a little, uh, quick sort of summary, I suppose, of my career um, in terms of what I'm um, bringing to the to the library sector and to ALIA, uh, and then a bit about the personal pathway and how other people, I think, can look at their own uh, career and personal pathway. In fact, that leadership can happen for anyone can exercise leadership and show leadership in terms of um, leadership from within, I suppose. Um, I don't think you have to be appointed to a position to be a leader. I think anybody can be a leader. It's about how you behave and how you treat other people, and, et cetera, and stand up for things. And then just a couple of um, slides I'll talk about from things I've pulled out from various um, leadership courses I've done, but also from just my, my work experience, my career. Um, about sort of career management skills, which I think um, is something that we all need to exercise, um, you know, for this long working life that we have, uh, and and then some thoughts on leadership. So, the my career um, is so I'm trained as a lawyer, and in the last um, sort of two or three years, I've moved more into general management, and in fact, um, 
just finished before this new role, um, I was um, acting in the position of managing director of a large research and development corporation. Um, and so have sort of been across finances and HR and communications and all that sort of general management and, and moved away just from the legal. Um, my, my training is I have a Bachelor of Arts um, majoring in, in English literature and theatre. I have a law degree. I have a, a graduate diploma of education studies and from Charles Sturt University. And I'm a graduate of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. Uh, and I've served on a couple of um, not-for-profit boards. Now I'm reporting to a not-for-profit board. Um, and, and I've also um, done the advanced management program at Melbourne Business School, which was uh, a real privilege to do and a, a fantastic course, which ran for two weeks and it was residential. Um, just with a cohort of 16 people um, and I learnt um, a lot from that course some of which I'll I'll talk about sort of I suppose in my my tips so the types of roles I've had um, as a lawyer um, have been quite varied um, and I've listed some of them there um, in the latter part of my career it was more as a general counsel um, sort of within um, a company and also uh, as the company secretary so working closely with the board. Um, I've also worked in largely government type organizations. Um, I started out in a private law firm but then felt that that didn't sort of align with my values and so moved more into government type agencies but have worked um, also in a university for the corporate regulator, um, a government department, mm -hmm. Um, and I worked at the um, Royal Commission into institutional responses to child sex abuse. Um, so I've had, you know, and I've worked in a department which was dealing with biosecurity issues. So I've, um, I'm a I'm a real generalist. I'm not a, I'm not a specialist in anything. Um, and and my personal sort of interest that I've done voluntary work in outside of um, my paid job, I've done work to support migrants, um, disadvantaged children. I've been a mentor for a couple of different organizations and I've worked on the board of a community services organization and a women's legal center. So on paper, uh, that's um, where it's so much more complex than that, um, who we are and what we bring to leadership um, that only tells part of the story um, and, a, and a small part. I've, I've got here um, this very this blurred um, picture on the on the screen there. It's deliberately blurred because it has some sort of private information about me. It's, it's an exercise I had to do. I went to a, a, a webinar. It was just last year and it was run by an organization called um, Career Grow. And I was sort of thinking, oh, I really would like to move on from what I'm doing, um, been working in sort of legal areas and government, and I'd like to have a new challenge and throw myself into something different. And, but I wasn't sure what. And so I, this um, seminar I went to, it wasn't so much about leadership, but it came into it. And one of the exercises we had to do, which I would encourage anyone who's interested in doing it, is do a timeline from when you had your first job through to now. So you just put the years and then choose different colors. So with one color, you write down um, when you started and finished, you know, any a particular job. So you have your jobs plotted along that timeline and then look at it and then plot sort of uh, significant things that happened in your life. Personal challenges could have been, um, you know, having a child, it could be a family member dying, um, it could be, um, you know, moving countries, you know, something personal sort of challenges, um, as well as times you've studied, voluntary work, etc. And then looking at that, see if you can sort of pinpoint um, moments over that career where things really worked and you were just you know, in the zone and felt very fulfilled, 
Um, and why was it? What was happening at that time? Because I think we can't just look at our working life and our personal life. I mean, we have to have them separate and have the balance, but they do inform each other. If you're stressed and unhappy at work, that has an impact at home. Um, and so what they asked us to do then was to have a look at when you, the other thing is to when you've had a look at a job transition, um, why did you leave one job and go into another one? Uh, and if you can remember at the time, what was happening and what did you do about it? And, and often I found when I looked at and did my timeline, I found that in, you know, sometimes it was a year or more before I changed jobs, I was, you know, getting um, uh, sort of unsettled and, and a bit frustrated and I was looking for other things and I'd often go outside of work and find other um, interests or activities or experiences um, to satisfy that frustration and to try and find connections with other places and then often through that or not I'd find another job and then move on but it's sort of helpful to recognize because I never wanted to be that person who is stuck in a job and whinging about it um, and um, making everyone around me unhappy. I always want to sort of leave while the going's good, if you like, and um, and and have new challenges. So I found, um, and I would encourage others to do a sort of a map like this for yourself because it really it really makes you sort of see things holistically and understand your motivations and where you might have been stuck, et cetera. And I think with any leadership, and this was in a, a quote said by a, an earlier speaker, um, to be a good leader, you have to know yourself um, first and foremost and have self-awareness. So that was uh, an interesting exercise. And I sort of learned from that, that often I was um, looking for things to do with working with people and helping people. Um, I was interested in uh, sort of um, uh, things that I found relaxing um, was to do with books and reading. Um, but the whole values around libraries actually matched with a lot of the things that I learned about myself from, from doing this personal pathway. Uh, so then another thing we talked about in this course and that I've thought about over the years um, is everybody really needs career management skills throughout their career um, because you know work um, can have challenges and working with different people and having funding cuts and having obstacles is part and parcel of work and so I think it's useful to think about what are the skills you need to be able to sustain a, a, a long and fulfilling career and I think it comes down to um, these, are, these are the things that I think you need. Others would have may have different views. I think it helps if you can always be curious. If you're curious, then you're always interested in things and looking for opportunities. Um, being optimistic, I think, is, is very, very important because change is always going to happen. But if you can be optimistic, it can give you a buffer to help you get through and, and see what's possible. Um, I think be flexible. The reason I put a picture of these trees here is um, uh, that theory that, you know, trees don't, don't break um, when they, even when there's strong winds because they're built to be flexible and to bend. And I think as people, um, we need to learn to do that as well. Um, and trees change as well. They change color like in these pictures. And, um, I think we also have to be persistent and resilient um, and that off, you can't do alone. You need to do that with other people and get strength of them, which is being connected. And that's where the acorns there are all very connected there. And people have talked about those, the importance of networking and connection. And I think that is important to sort of be vulnerable. And, and you know, help each other. Um, and, and I think be brave. How am I going for time, Magdalena? A little bit? Okay. Um, this is my last slide. <laughs> so my thoughts on leadership, um, I suppose, from, from those various um, courses I've done, but just from what I've learned about myself, um, are that number one, 
self-awareness is really important working out what your values are what you think are the right behaviors and um and really sort of understanding those and that leads into uh servant uh leadership which is a term coined about 40 years ago um uh by uh, a researcher whose name I've forgotten um but servant leadership is about focusing on the needs of others and so you um by removing self-interest you build trust which then leads to influence and so you're about setting other people up for success um a growth mindset um a lot of you will have heard about and that's about learning and improving so not pretending you're perfect and you've got everything sorted but being open and vulnerable to um making mistakes and learning from them and helping each other uh, a common purpose I think is really important um, for a leader to set that common purpose so everybody knows um, what their role is and they're working and pulling on something pulling in something together and accountability so that there's um you're accountable sort of to and for each other and and so you work as a team because you each keep a check on each other and my final which is ironic that I'm saying this because I've just been talking at you but my final message would be listen 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 um and that's what I've been trying to do in my first few weeks um in my new role um because you'll always learn something if you listen um and I've just been talking for 10 minutes and I haven't learned anything because I haven't listened but um I have learned a lot in in listening for the hour and a half or so um before this so thank you very much um for the opportunity and um I'll leave it there yeah uh, thank you Katie for your presentation we had a, a great pleasure to hear as uh, uh, some personal story uh from the uh, Australian Library and Information Association. Thank you. And the last but not least, uh, our presenter from Philippines, Brian Boy uh, C. Cortis, President of the uh, Association of Special Libraries of the Philippines. So, Brian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Magdalena. Um, I will be sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything works. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hi everyone. Magandang hapon dito sa Pilipinas or uh, good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here and I want to thank our university librarian, uh, the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Ms. Elvira Lapus. I think uh, she is here for recommending me to be part of this webinar. And thank you also to uh, Lloyd uh, for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to share my story as a new librarian and as a new leader in the profession. I will give a short presentation focused on how I started to be a librarian and my reflections on my leadership journey. I hope I can spark a little inspiration to everyone. Okay. A bit of a background information about myself. I am a graduate of Library and Information uh, Science at Baliwag University and currently pursuing my master's degree in Library and Information Science at the University of the Philippines uh, School of Library and Information Studies. I am working as a librarian at the University of the Philippines College of Law Library and a library consultant at the Philippine College of Advanced Arts and Technology. Um, in the Philippines, we have a small population of librarians compared to the demand of employment. As a student, of library and information science, I wanted to see more young people to take library science as their bachelor's degree course. I made myself a walking advertisement for BLIS. I joined uh, different school organizations and applied for different national uh, recognitions to tell everybody that we exist. I became the first BLIS student to be, to be president of our university Supreme Student Council, the first BLIS student delegate in the Ayala Young Leaders Congress, one of the most prestigious leadership program for outstanding student leaders in the Philippines, and the first BLIS graduate to be included as one of the 30 national finalists and uh, regional awardee in the search for the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. This is how I fell in love with librarianship our profession that I didn't know ex exist before entering college, a real seren uh, serendipitous moment. I'm also active in community development and nation building activities. I organize programs and organizations to promote reading, 
establishing uh, and sustaining community libraries and, and, and championing popularization and uh, visualization of Philippine history. I am a self-proclaimed storyteller. I go to communities to conduct storytelling activities. And one of my focus is dream building. Uh, there is a study here in the Philippines that seven out of 10 Filipino teens do not have uh, a dream or do not have a clear vision uh, for their future. This is why I teach them how to dream through storytelling. Every child has a right to dream and we librarians have the power to make their dreams possible, not monetary, but inspiration through the information available in our libraries. I founded a volunteer program where I am found, um, the founding librarian. We call it a library, community collaboration program in establishing and maintaining barang barangay reading centers. So we talk to community members and involve them in making community libraries. We donate books, computers, and organize ex um, existing collection, train young community members how to run the reading center, and do series of programs for the community. I'm involved in Project SciSci where I am uh, the finance director. It is a non-government youth organization uh, with a vision to actively uh, champion the popularization and visualization of Philippine history since 2013. Its mission is to propagate um, relevant, useful, and inspiring information in print and online sourced from uh, Philippine history. Since 2016, when I began to work as a librarian, I look forward in joining different library organizations and be involved in their activities and for me to be able to grow as a professional. The first organization I joined, aside from our Margaret, uh, mother organization, which is the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, is the Association of Special Libraries of the Philippines, the second oldest library organization in the Philippines, um, serving 68 years. I was appointed by the 2019 president, Mr. Uh, Brian Lloyd Dairit, as the secretary of the association. At first, uh, I was hesitant to open my mouth to share my thoughts and ideas because the officers are very intellectual. Their ideas are so brilliant and their passion to lead and serve the community is flaming. But they are also, um, but they are so kind and accommodating until I became um, comfortable working with them. The following year, I was elected as a public uh, relations officer and last year, the vice president and this year as the president. It was a very quick transition. It is really a calling and I am very uh, thankful for, um, for the people who trusted me even I'm, I'm young in the profession and in the organization. They gave their trust that I can lead the, uh, the, the association. The second picture is during the launching of the Network of Academic Law Librarians in 2018, where I'm one of the founding officers as the secretary and now as one of its directors. NAL, as we call it, is a professional organization with the goal of uplifting the status of academic law libraries and librarians in order to provide for all uh, the information needs of law school stakeholders and to contribute to the improvement of legal education system of the country, which is the Philippines. And the third uh, picture is the Asosasyon ng Aklatan at Sinupan ng Diliman, an organization within the University of the Philippines Diliman composed of librarians and archivists working in the university. I'm one of its directors as well. We promote uh, our unit libraries through social media and conduct trainings, not just for our members, but, all, but for all Filipino librarians and archivists. Um, I will not be the person I am today without the help of my mentors and advisors in, uh, in library librarianship who are very willing to develop young professionals like me. As a young leader, it is very important to look for people who will teach you, who will call your attention if you have decisions that is not acceptable to, acceptable to others, and who will correct your mistakes. They say, experience is the best teacher, but what is the next best teacher? It is the experience of other people. Ms. Lilia Echeverri, or Mother Lily as we call her, who rediscovered my potentials and encouraged me to be involved in different or activities for librarians. She also trained me to be not only a librarian, but a good, responsible, and professional librarian. She is former president of the Philippine Associ uh, Librarians Association Incorporated. Next is Mr. Brian Lloyd Dairit, whom I met in Taiwan in an international conference on electronic thesis and dissertation, where he offered me to be part of the executive board of the Association of Special Libraries of the Philippines as the secretary. 
Next is Mr. Joseph Yap, one of um, ASLP's advisors this year, who mentors us how to run the organization and inspired us with his dedication to serve the community. He is the president-elect of SLA Asia. Next is, yeah. next is the first... Um, Next, the first president of the Network of Academic Law Librarians, Ms. William Frias from the De La Salle University College of Law Library, who always uh, give her trust and, on me and believing in my potentials. And lastly, my professor um, in college, Ms. Linderlit Maglake, who inspires me with her journey as a librarian. She always supports me with uh, my advocacy. She is also a very good friend of mine, teaching me not only uh, professional lessons, but also life lessons. As young librarian and new to the to leading library and librarian organizations, I tattooed in my mind that I should be teachable. I always think that I am half empty, so there is more space for new learning and experience. Being a leader, we should surround ourselves with people uh, with great minds and big heart for other people. And as for my reflection in my leadership journey, uh, leadership is not a position. Leadership is both an action and a responsibility. We can lead without a position. If we really want to serve and contribute to the development of our profession, we will do everything to reach out. We can volunteer to different communities or organizations and be part of their activities and events or even share our thoughts and knowledge. Young librarians are just uh, waiting for their day for their time or waiting for, for opportunities that will come their way to be involved in different organizations. We should keep on tapping young librarians and open, their, open the doors for them. If they will be um, given opportunities, they will surely create a positive impact to our communities and uh, because of their talents and skills. If they are a bit shy, let us create an avenue where they can be comfortable in sharing their thoughts and start their leadership journey with our with our organization. We have a term in the Philippines called bayanihan or working together as we want to achieve a common goal. Collaboration is very important when we are, uh, we are clear with our, our mission as, or, as organizations. Leadership is not a competition of people or organizations. We have to work together for our profession. We have to lead not for ourselves, but for our members and the advancement of librarianship. There are 50 plus or library organizations here in the Philippines and the potential to create positive impact and contribute to the national development is very big when we work together. To become a great leader, you must accept the challenge is normal. You will face uncertainties and you have to be strong physically and mentally to overcome all of this. And if the time will come that you can't handle challenges, ask for help. Ask the help of other people around you. Ask for support. I can say that leadership is a series of events and experiences that, uh, that prepare you to be a great. There is a proper timing for everything. And leadership is, commit is a commitment. When you commit, you have to keep on working. You should focus on thinking of solutions rather than making excuses. You have to believe that you are capable of do doing something. You are capable today than yesterday. You must be willing to learn continuously and, and to accept being taught. Don't think that you already know everything. Be teachable. Very important in leadership is the help from other people. You can't have a successful organization with the, without the effort of your fellow officers, volunteers, and members. Be appreciative even, even uh, with the smallest contribution from other people. Fill their hearts with love for them to continue serving and doing things for the association. And lastly, my mantra, be inspired with the actions and accomplishments of other people. Be inspired with the people who are making their effort to be great leaders and librarians. But don't let that inspiration be an inspiration forever. You have to take action. Start simple steps to be better. Don't just be like the person you are inspired with. Be better than them. And to be better than them, you have to act now. And lastly, empower other people to create new, new, new generation of leaders. You have to transfer the skills of leadership. You will, uh, you will not be forever on the top. Time will come. You have to step down and let others take the lead. Let us continue to dis uh, discover new leaders. Don't be afraid to trust young bloods. They might fail on the first step. Carry them for their second step and their third step will be better than, than the previous. And that's the end of my presentation. Should you have questions, I am very much willing to answer. Just send me an email. 
my email address is on your screen. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. And good afternoon. Yeah, Brian, thank you very much for your presentation and sharing your experience that it was a pleasure to hear it. And for the end, I would like to share my screen and yes, and say more that um, on behalf of our organization of MLAS and new professionals, I would like to thank to all our speakers and to you. Uh, our participants, we have so much information about leadership and diversity. We will combine all this information uh, to support MLAS program and uh, at the IFLA Congress in Dublin, yes, because on uh, 27 July, we have a session on Wednesday morning and we would like to invite you to take part in the session if you will be in Dublin. Uh, so at the end, thank you all again and we will see soon. Thank you.